Hello, welcome back to another episode of Classic Model Trains. I'm Ron. In my last video about the chassis steamers, I put in three Easter eggs. I'd asked if you found them to please comment below and let me know. Well, I had one fella that found them several hours after the video was posted. I want to give a shout out to Eric E for finding those, posting them, and having a little fun with us. In case you didn't figure out what they were, here's the hint. During the video's opening monologue, I mentioned the three railroads that merged together to what would be called the Chessie system. The Baltimore and Ohio, the Chesapeake and Ohio, and the Western Maryland Railroad. During the start of the train running videos, here's what the Easter eggs looked like. I've been enjoying all the comments that people have left on my videos. Thank you very much. One gentleman named Regis B, he's commented several times on a lot of videos. I thank you very much. But Regis had mentioned that I need to do some repair videos on something besides Tycho's all the time. So I'm like, well, I completely agree with you. I did a little searching and I found this locomotive that I started to make a video on a while back ago, but never completed it. It showed up from a uh, donation center auction find in just horrible, horrible condition. You might recognize it from my So Much Carnage video that I'd made a few months back. It turns out that this is an HO scale model of a GM Electromotive Division SD45 locomotive. These were manufactured from December 1965 until December 1971. There was 1,260 models that were produced. Some of the problems with these earlier engines was crankshaft failure due to engine block flex. EMD did improve this with a stronger block in later on productions. As of 2022, almost all SD45s have been retired, scrapped, or they've been converted into SD40-2s. So let me take you on a journey how I got this busted up old locomotive fixed and back on the tracks. It showed up in several pieces inside the packaging from the auction. It appears to have been spray painted silver. I'm assuming from a young modeler practicing his painting skills. Everything had spray paint on it, including the wheels, windshield, side trucks, and what remained of the railings. I had recently purchased an ultrasonic cleaner and was excited to see just how good of a job this device could take off unwanted paint. Taking apart these particular type of Athern locomotives is really quite simple. Up on the top, they've got this bar right across here that that provides electricity coming from the trucks to the top of the motor. So these, they just actually kind of pry right off because the way it's got this shape. So there's a clip right in here and you get up underneath of this clip and you give it a little pry like that and that will allow the truck to drop out of the frame. You don't want to lose this driveline piece right here. It's your top gear and then this driveline will slide out of the flywheel right in this area if one wanted to work on that. And then the trucks themselves, they've got two more clips. There's one here on the front, which just pries off. And then there's also these ones, there's some here on the bottom. Coming with a screwdriver at this angle, is this gonna work? There's one coming over here, there. And then this allows the side frames to come off. Well, the whole thing's gonna kind of fall apart. Oh, there it is. And that is what's involved in getting these particular type of trucks taken apart. Now this one here, I've already, I've already disassembled it and it was already cleaned up. And I lost the video footage on how I took this apart, so this is why I'm uh, redoing it right now, so you can see how these things operate. You know, this, this little guy would be sitting right on top right here, spinning the drive line, spinning all the gears, which spin all the trucks, because they're sitting in here like this. Very, very simple to take apart and service and to reassemble. So I've already greased all these up. 
I've already cleaned all the wheels up and everything, so just put these all back in the bushings that's in the truck side frames, like so. Get this, this other guy coming up from underneath. Make sure all the axles get inside the bushings that are on the side frame. Hold it together. You take this clip here. Push it down right there. Now we've got everything mostly assembled. There's a clip that goes on the front. And then of course this clip will go back on when we put this back in the truck. Goes in here. There's a pin right there that rides in this hole right here. Put my little baby drive line in. It only goes in one way because it's got this little tiny keyway right there. These right here have got, these are bushing blocks and there's also a very tiny little washer right in here that you want to make sure you don't lose those and if you're missing them, then you need to go and get some new ones. Thrust washers. This will go back inside. Take this clip. Clips back on like that. And that will keep the truck from falling out. A lot of guys will take um, stranded copper wire and they'll solder from here and they'll solder up here in order to make sure that they get a good contact. Because they say that these things here, sometimes they have a tendency to not make good contact. I've never had any problem with it myself. Biggest thing is make sure that your flywheel isn't rubbing on it like this one here is going to do. It looks like they're most happiest if you put them on the right direction. So it isn't one side fits all. It's very specific, which is the front, which is the back. So I do have a little bit of clearance between the flywheels. This armature seems to have gotten a little on the dirty side. After the trucks were disassembled one at a time, I put the pieces in a Ziploc bag with about a tablespoon of simple green cleaner and filled halfways with hot tap water. The ultrasonic cleaner has a built-in water heater element. I have it set to 110 degrees. After 20 minutes, I removed the truck pieces, rinsed them off, and was very happy with the outcome. The truck on the left has been cleaned in nothing but water and a little simple green. The truck on the right has not been cleaned yet. The ultrasonic cleaner did such a good job with the trucks and frame, I wanted to see what it could do with the plastic shell that's been horribly painted. This is after 15 minutes with 110 degree water and a quarter cup of simple green in a gallon Ziploc bag along with some, some normal tap water. Another 15 minutes and I could really see the original paint. But it has started to fail due to the heat. That's fine. I'm just still experimenting. After another 15 minutes in the ultrasonic cleaner with simple green and water, it came out looking like this. I was very surprised. There were a few paint flakes left and I took care of those with a toothbrush and hot running water in the sink. Now that I know what the locomotive looked like originally, I decided to try and repaint it into a Southern Pacific bloody nose livery. Southern Pacific purchased 317 of this particular locomotive. After the frame was ultrasonically cleaned and repainted, I'd found that it was, it was bent really bad because the new body wouldn't fit in it. So I used a file back here to try to kind of see where where it was bent at, and then of course you know give it a little a little bit of love. This was this was happening before it was all reassembled, uh, so it was obviously dropped off a table and landed really hard on the back. Updated it with some little stubby Katie's uh, front and back here with the self-centering springs on them, the whisker couplers, and that pretty much did the restoration of this particular chassis. Now when I, when I was working on it, I took the original body and I painted it to match the original livery that it was going to be in, but I, the windows were all shot because they, they were just completely, there was so much glue all over them. 
And then this post is broken out right here. Uh, this window's broken. This step is missing right here. This step is missing back here. I mean, this poor thing has just been absolutely abused. The railings came out not too shabby, being the original ones, but they're missing some excursions. So that's why I decided to go with another body. Because when I priced out all the little pieces that I needed for it, the headlights and stuff, it was just cheaper to end up getting a, a whole nother body. So I've got this blue box SD45 shell, and it doesn't have any hand railings on it. Now, the original model, after I got done cleaning it all up, and then I reprimed the body, it's got some of the handrail on it. So I'm going to be able to use this as a template. Plus, I also went online and looked at other models uh, and also the real locomotives, and I'm just going to have to scratch build the ones up front. But I want to leave these railings on it. So I went to the local hobby store, and I bought just a huge selection of these A-line stanchions. And the ones that I've decided to use are going to be the 5 8 and the 9 16 stanchions. And I've also picked up these model supplies brass wire. And this is 022 diameter. So I am going to bend up some hand railings for this thing, paint them, and see how they come out. So after about an hour's worth of fabricating and doing a little soldering, this is what this handrail looks like right here. Of course, it's got to still be painted and stuff like that. Get to working on the other side now. So I made the primary bend right up in here on this, and then I'll slide these stanchions on and put these in the hole that's on the body. And of course, you see how they're loose and they move around, and this is the reason why one has to solder them. So I'm going to get enough stanchions on here, and then I'll warm up the soldering iron, and I will get to soldering these stanchions to the handrail. I use some paste flux here on a little tiny brush, and I come by and I put paste flux on each one of these joints right here. You can't successfully solder unless you use a paste flux to get the solder to flow in where it's supposed to. Now you can look through the a stanchion, and you can see the body lines from the, the doors in behind it. So I use that to make sure that my stanchions are going straight up and down. But what I found out works the best is to move it out of the way and then tin the wire. And you gotta use just the tiniest, tiniest amount of solder. Now once I got the wire tinned a little bit, this move the stanchion into place, get the job hot to pull that solder in underneath the stanchion. Now I've got a blob of solder right there. So you use this stuff here. It's a it's a solder wick. It's just basically uh, brass or copper weaved together, and you put it down over the top of your solder. And once you get it warm, it will wick out all the extra stuff that you've got. And that stanchion is now soldered on there. So now we're going to bend this little arching down here and bend it around to complete back in there. Got that all bent in. Now it's time to solder up the little stanchions on the back side of it right now. Well, after about four hours of soldering and fabricating, these are what the handmade rails look like right now. So now we got to get them uh, removed and get them painted or prepped for paint and paint them. Uh, this metallic blue paint, ordinarily the the fuel tank would be painted in that metallic blue and then the hand railings would be painted in blue too. I just finished making these up and um, I, well, I like the white because it really makes the hand railing stand out but I'm just going to leave this black down here because this is going to be a really hard color to try to find that metallic blue paint. Now that it's all fixed up, let's run it around the layout and see how it looks.
that you learned something new by watching this video. I certainly do enjoy making them. Here's a couple more great videos that I recommend.